Well, critical race theory, it's been around for nearly 40 years, but recently the topic has become a hot button issue for parents, teachers, and even politicians. Yeah, the debate about using critical race theory to teach students about American history is not going away anytime soon. And here to give us a bit more understanding about it, University of Illinois Chicago professor, Dr. David Stovall, and fourth grade teacher, Tracy Pinley. Hello, welcome to the both of you all. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, doctor, let's start with you. Define critical race theory for people that don't know what it is. Indeed, well, critical race theory was a response to something called critical legal studies. It said that the criminal legal system in the United States was a class-based system. And Derrick Bell, often referred to as the grandfather of critical race theory, wrote a book in 1973 called Race, Racism, and American Law that said that the criminal legal system is not just a class-based system, but it is also a race-based system, it is a gender-based system, it is a system based on ability. So that critique of critical legal studies birthed critical race theory. We get the name critical race theory from a conference in the late 80s in Madison, Wisconsin, by a group of Derrick Bell students who were actually confronting racism in legal scholarship and at law schools. So why is it so prevalent in the headlines now? Interesting question. Well, the short story is Christopher Rufo, who is a fellow at the Manhattan Institute, was on a Fox News program in March or April of last year. And Donald Trump was actually watching the taping. And he was talking about microaggressions and critical race theory and mm. the things that critical race theory had put forward. Donald Trump wa watches this and literally puts out an executive order banning the use of critical race theory in any type of federal training around diversity and anti-racism. Wow. Yeah, I wanna get into the argument, but I wanna bring Tracy in. Now, Tracy, you're a teacher uh, in the Atlanta area. What is the situation at your school? So at my school, you know, it's really business as usual. We trust teachers, we trust our families and students, and we are showing students multiple perspectives in the classroom. Someone at the Department of Education in Georgia recently described critical race theory as a paper tiger, something that doesn't exist that's just been made up that we're all just fascinating on right now. And I think the crux of it is that there is a lack of informed decision making here in my state right now. Um, they were looking at critical race theory as something that is going to divide students and families and teach everyone that, you know, whites are oppressors. And that really just isn't true um, in the least bit. What critical race theory does is actually look past the individual and it looks at outcomes. It says that racism is not solely within the individual, but also in education, in law. We can look at examples such as redlining and bank loans that were restricted to families of colors. Mm -hmm. And those very real parts of our history have a legacy that still impacts communities today, including schools. So Tracy, you're definitely teaching it in your fourth grade class then, right? So it's interesting because we're not really giving students an article and saying, here kids, this is critical race theory. Okay. In yeah, instead what we're doing is a lot of socio-emotional learning. When I teach my Native American standards and Christopher Columbus, I present the kind of white Eurocentric version of it. But then I also read a book called Encounter that presents the Native American's perspective, right? When we're looking at um, inventions, we're not solely looking at the Caucasian inventors that our standards lift up, but we're looking at multiple inventions and what they've contributed to society today. Right, and doctor, you heard what Tracy said about parents or people being concerned that it could divide students. What do you say to those people? Uh, this thing around, a lot of times in the United States, we hear this conversation about when will we get past race? And critical race theory says, you're not going to get past race until you get to it and America still has trouble with getting to race. And because we don't, we're now in the situation that we're in. Right, so, so what's next then? So then how, we, how do we get more people to understand what you guys are telling us and to see that it's not a threat and that it should be something that be, is included in curriculum? It's exactly to your point. Historical accuracy should never be considered the threat. So this idea of telling a story that tells us the convenience, the convenience clause of the 13th Amendment that justifies enslavement except for punishment for a crime or ends enslavement except for punishment for a crime or this idea of a three-fifths clause that says that black people count for three-fifths of a human being mm -hmm. or the Voting Rights Act. So all of these things need to be visited 
with their intent and the historical accuracy around how they come into being. And that's the conversation that critical race theory is pushing us towards. So the future says we should never dismiss historical accuracy because of some political ploy. Right. Now, Tracy, the Board of Education recently passed a resolution banning CRT from public schools in Georgia. Uh, explain what the resolution was and, and what your thoughts are on that. So it's important to recognize that this is a resolution, which is primarily a statement of belief. And the very first tenet in this resolution declares that Georgia is not a racist state. And when I personally pushed back against that with our board members, they told me, well, what they mean is that the laws in Georgia are not racist. Um, so the fear right now is that this resolution, which codifies our beliefs, could lead to laws being made, to rules being made for teachers in the classroom. One um, particularly troubling aspect of this resolution for me is that it wants to ban teachers requiring any type of assignments that look at political activism or protest. Even as a fourth grade teacher, I teach my students how to call their senators. I realize that a lot of people my age do not know how to contact their representatives and senators. So I teach my students that. And the fear is that that type of freedom and teaching students to be civic minded and to participate could be lost. Yeah. You know, even if one of our, or some of our viewers don't have kids, because we keep talking about it in the education sense, how does this CRT affect everyone? Why should people care? It absolutely impacts everyone. You know, I feel that collectively educators are the most powerful force on this planet next to parents. And if we are to remove the teaching these multiple perspectives and really pushing against this idea of a meritocracy, if we don't do that, then all we're gonna do is continue to replicate the inequities that currently exist. Um, and that impacts absolutely everybody. One reason I think that this is tough for many people who are on the skin that I'm in is that it ignores this idea of meritocracy. It's looking at outcomes. It's saying that what you have today isn't necessarily a result of what you've worked for. Um, and I think that's scary for a lot of people, but we have to push past that and we have to move past this idea that colorblindness is the correct way to go. Just like Dr. Stovall said, we have to get to race, we have to deal with it. And pretending it's not there isn't gonna help um, our students, especially our students are co of color. I want them to see themselves being successful. Wow. I want them to see their identities reflected in the curriculum that I present and the literature that we read. And when they bring difficult conversations into the classroom, I don't wanna tell them we can't talk about it because I have to walk on eggshells. I want to tackle it, and I want to make them feel heard and valued. Yeah, right. very, very good yeah. points. Tracy, thank you so much. Dr. Stovall, thank you so much. I know this is an ongoing topic, and we'll continue to discuss.